Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Now, computer peripherals are very, very expensive for um, what they actually allow you to do, but there are some pretty cheap options out there. But peripherals in general are also very important to computer gaming because they're actually what allow us to, well, play the games, you know, do certain things in the games, you know, from breaking things to adding things. And we're going to be going over different peripherals today, from keyboards to mouses, headsets to headset stands. We're going to be going over which ones are actually suitable for you, which ones you should get, and which ones are actually worth your money in today's video. So I really hope you guys enjoy. Now the two mouse pads we'll be going over is the Corsair MM700 um, IQ RGB extended mouse pad and the Razer Goliathus Chroma RGB extended mouse pad. Now, the reason why I went for these mouse pads from these specific companies is because Corsair and Razer have been very reliable over the past years, and they've been putting out really good products over the past years, so I'm really, really excited to see if the opinions online and the reviews online that I've seen about these products are actually true. Alrighty, first up we got the Corsair box coming in at 17.5 inches long, 5.8 inches tall and wide, and I would say this box is pretty big for a pretty big mouse pad. Um, the box has some very very pretty art on it showing off the MM700 in action, and in the back it actually has the specifications in different languages which is really nice compared to the um, Razer box. So I'm going to go ahead and see how this does compared to the other one. Up next we have the Razer box coming in at 13 inches long, 5.9 inches tall and wide. Now what I really like about this box is the fact that it includes a lot more art than Corsair's box and it's a lot smaller than Corsair's box. I really like the Razer logo with the green background, it looks amazing and I feel like um, this mouse pad will definitely match any system that it's in. The box is also a lot smaller which makes it a lot easier to store and looking pretty while doing so. All right, pros and cons about the boxes. So the Corsair box, it has pretty mouse pad art, of course. It has the specifications of the uh, mouse pad in different languages on the box, which is really nice. Uh, it actually shows off the mouse pad in action. It shows what it's able to do. And of course it has some pretty Corsair logo and it's yellow and black colors. Now, the cons about this box is that it is very, very big. Um, it's kind of expensive for a mouse pad. I believe this cost me $70 for this mouse pad. And the cardboard cutout in there, I guess, is kind of flimsy and kind of weak. So if you were to use the cardboard cutout again, then um, it may not really survive unless you're very very careful with it and also it doesn't have really have a lot of art and I would say just yellow is kind of plain I guess you could say now up next we have the pros and cons about the razor box now the razor box has a really really pretty and matching green and black color code which would literally match any kind of system it's in um, it shows what the mouse pad is actually able to do. It shows the mouse pad in action. It shows it flexing. It also has a lot more art and is a lot prettier than the Corsair box. It takes up less space and overall it is a very very nice box. Now the cons about this box is that it doesn't include any foreign language specifications um, on the box itself. So unless you open up the user manual which is inside the box and your foreign language, you won't know what it's about. Um, this box, it kind of is weak, like the outside. You're able to puncture it really, really easily. Alrighty guys, now we have the actual MM700 in action. With a very big length of 56.6 inches and a width of 16.5 inches, this is a very very big mouse pad and I really hope that your desk is able to support this. But one of my very very beloved features of this mouse pad is not only the amazing and outstanding filament RGB, but then also it has a USB pass through. 
which is a very very nice feature of this mouse pad because that means that you'll be able to put in your I don't know like your Bluetooth mouse dongle or you could have your wired mouse dongle um, on the side and then just route the wire in the back of your desk or you can really just have any Bluetooth device here because this thing is also powered through USB-C which makes it very very easy for moving around and packing right back up when you're done. You won't have to worry about a um, wire always constantly being connected to this and you having to worry about wire management. We could just have the mouse pad separately and the wire separately and that makes organizing really really easy. And then another thing about this mouse pad is the fact that it has, I believe, 10 or 7 built-in light modes. It has a small button in the back that you can press, and it allows you to switch up the light modes to whatever you please. And another thing about this mouse pad is that you're able to control it through Corsair IQ. You're able to make a lot of interesting lighting effects, and overall, this is a very, very pretty mouse pad with some very pretty features. By bending the uh, edges of any kind of glowing mouse pad, that will cause the filament to crack and possibly glow endlessly. But with Corsair's mouse pad, that did not happen when I bent the edges, which was a really nice thing to see because with most cheap mouse pads that I get that are RGB, they don't usually survive that test. But then another thing about this mouse pad is the fact that the big rubber base literally keeps the mouse pad from moving, which is a really nice thing to see. Alrighty guys, now it's time to move on to the Razer mouse pad. Will the mouse pad um, do exactly or better than the Corsair MM700? We're gonna go ahead and find that out right now. Alrighty guys, moving on to the Razer mouse pad now. Um, some of the first two things that I notice is the fact that the mouse pad not only does not have a USB pass-through, but then also the wire is permanently stuck on there, which might make wire managing a pain, but that's unfortunate. So the mouse pad itself literally does not move under any kind of push and pull, which is really, really nice. It's good for uh, high rapid gaming, but then also it did not survive the stress test, uh, glowing blemishes showing up after bending it profusely, and yeah, that's also very unfortunate. RGB on this mouse pad is not only very, very pretty, but then also it's bright enough to not only give off the effects that you put on here, but then also it's bright enough to really give you that gaming experience and not to distract you from your battles or fights, which is really, really nice to see. Alrighty, so moving everything onto the mouse pad, um, this Razer mouse pad really did give me that gaming experience. Not only did its RGB glow really light up my desk, because my desk is just completely dark, but then also being only 11 inches wide and 36 inches long, it didn't take up too much space. It didn't really show itself off too much, which is really, really nice to see. Um, and it was also just big enough to fit my keyboard and my mouse, and I have a really big keyboard. But another thing that I really, really liked about this mouse pad is the fact that it did not move at all while I was playing, and I was actually in a really intense fight right here. So that was really, really nice to see. And then also, this mouse only has one built-in RGB mode, which is completely fine, but then also you're able to control this mouse pad through Razer Chroma, which is amazing. You're able to do your own lighting effects. It only has one zone, which is the entire mouse pad, which is completely fine as well. But then also you're able to do different effects such as the fireplace or the color wheel effect. So this is really, really nice on Razer. Alrighty, so pros and cons about the Corsair MM700. Starting off with the pros, it has a three zone lighting, which is really, really nice. So you can have one zone be one color, the other zone be the other color, and then of course having the logo be whatever you want. It has a two-way USB 3.0 pass-through, which is really, really nice. Um, it allows you to plug in your components there with easy access to them. Um, the power is actually through USB-C, which makes storage and uh, transport very, very easy. And you're also able to plug it in either way, which is really, really nice. Um, I would say 
another pro would have to be the big rubber base that it has it just makes it impossible to move and it is really really good for computer gaming but the cons about this mouse pad is that it is very very big um, if you don't have a desk big enough then it probably won't be able to support this um, I don't really like the Corsair logo in the bottom left corner because say that you're just having a big setup um, having that Corsair logo just kind of throws off the entire thing but you know Corsair is just trying to show off what they made so that's completely fine um, I would say another con has to be the price of this mouse pad uh, $70 for this mouse pad which is very very insane um, I don't really think anybody would want to spend 70 bucks on a mouse pad like this but you know that's just my opinion alrighty pros and cons about the Razer Goliathus um, starting off with the pros I would say it's big rubber foot that it has just makes it also impossible to move while playing your video games which is really really nice to see um, the low price of this mouse pad $40 um, very very nice I got this for 40 bucks it's very very good the actual uh, MSRP is $40 so that's really really nice um, another thing about this mouse pad is that it's very low profile only 36 inches long which is really really nice to see uh, this mouse pad doesn't really show itself off too much, only having the Razer logo on the block and not even glowing. So that's really, really nice. Razer does does show that it made it, but not too much. Uh, going on to the cons about this mouse pad. Uh, I would say you might want to be a little careful with flexing this mouse pad a little too much. I don't really see why anybody would be flexing it a lot like I did. But, you know, just be careful. Uh, it doesn't really have a USB-C pass-through, which isn't very convenient, I would say. Uh, for me, at least. I don't know about you guys. You guys may not care, but I do. Um, the power cord isn't detachable, so that may make transport a little tough and a little annoying. But overall, this is a good mouse pad, yep. Alrighty, guys. That'll just about do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like, dislike if you didn't like it, subscribe if you want to, and then comment down below what you guys think was the best mouse pad. Do you like Corsair's mouse pad, or do you like Razer's mouse pad better? Go ahead and tell me down below. Um, I'll be uploading again every Wednesday, and I'll be sticking to my schedule, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And then, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.